After photographing the two most striking objects in the Orion constellation, we will head towards the Canis Major constellation and the bright star in the night sky. Hello, welcome to the Astronominas channel. I am Fabio and it's time to move away from the most famous deep sky objects and we're going to delve into a region that apparently doesn't have many attractions, the Canis Major constellation. I say apparently because the region does not have a very high density of objects like the Orion or Carina regions, but it is home of two incredible nebula that are not so well known the Sigur Nebula and the Taurus Helm Nebula. In addition, it is home of the brightest star in the night sky, Sirius. Today I'm going to make my first photograph attempt at the Sigur Nebula, so I don't know exactly what it looks like through the lenses and screens of my equipment. The Sigur Nebula is located a little east of the Canis Major constellation, about 3,500 light years away from the Earth. It is a shell-shaped emission nebula, originating from three supernova explosions between 6 and 1 million years ago. Viewed from our perspective, this shell seems like a bird with spreaded wings, with a distance of approximately 1400 light years between the ends. In addition to the ionized hydrogen cloud by young stars in the region, the nebula is also composed of gases and cosmic dust. I chose this object for two reasons. Firstly, because it is a new target, which even I have not been able to photograph with my DSLR cameras and lenses before, and also because it is an object that is most often photographed using the Hubble palette or ACGO filters. In this type of astrophotography, narrowband filters are used that allows the passage of specific wavelengths, usually the three main gases present in emission nebula. Sulfur, hydrogen and oxygen. This approach allows much more in-depth studies of the nebula composition and produces spectacular images but I'll be photographing the Sigur Nebula without any kind of filter. Just take advantage of its best position in the night sky when passing through this highest point, which is 78 degrees of altitude and extremely close to the zenith. This will occur exactly at 11.30 pm, and I intend to start the image acquisition process at 10 pm and finish around 1 am performing the meridional flip exactly when the mount reaches 78 degrees of altitude. Lately, I am choosing objects for the favorable placement in the night sky, and also for the best framing of the equipment I have available. This is better for the acquisition workflow, which is crucial especially when clear nights are here, but also generates the best image quality results. As I honestly have no idea what you see on the tablet screen and I do the framing, I'm going to keep my ASI 183MC Pro default setting, which is 1200 second subframes, with camera gain at 1500 and cooling at minus 10 degrees. The strategy will be to capture as many subframes as possible while the nebula crosses the meridian and hope that atmospheric conditions cooperate during the night and early morning. I was able 
able to capture 45 subframes of 1200 seconds and discarded only 4 of them for cloudiness. Surprisingly, on this specific target, there were no discards due to satellite risks, which is becoming quite rare nowadays. To be honest, during the image acquisition process, I could only observe stars on the tablet screen. The only indications that I was in the correct location were the ASIR's Sky Atlas alignment and a small, almost imperceptible diffuse bubble of hydrogen in the corner of the images. Even while stacking the images in Deep Sky Stacker, I wasn't quite sure I was going to make much progress. But when I started post-processing the image in Photoshop, the silhouette of the seagull started to appear and the final result surprised me a lot. Seeking for the new and exploring increasingly distant horizons. This is what has always driven our greatest discoveries. And night after night, it keeps us pointing our telescopes at the immensity of the space in search of ever better images. I hope you like the final image of the Seagull Nebula. I wish you all clear skies and see you soon.